two libertarian candidates and a Kentucky Republican lawmaker are now fighting for the right to be bribed. I'm not kidding. So Raw Story reports on this. They filed a lawsuit in U.S. District Court intended to overturn state ethics laws that limit campaign contributions to $1,000 and prohibit lawmakers from accepting gifts from lobbyists and their employers. All right, so let me pause just to lay out for you guys the overall situation when it comes to money and politics. On the national level, the laws are already very, very lax. So there's still some that remain, like, for example, at least in theory, your super PAC is not supposed to coordinate with your campaign. So the outside spending groups can spend as much as they want. Because, again, in theory, they're not really connected to the campaign, even though they're always connected to the campaign. And it also, there are also different limits depending on where exactly the contribution is going and who it's coming from. So, like, for example, donating to a political party is different than donating to an individual candidate. And it's different than donating to a super PAC. So it's complex the way the laws are written, but all you need to know is that by and large, on a national level, we've lost our democracy because the few limits that exist are, are so lax that they don't prevent bribery. They don't prevent corruption in any way, shape, or form. Now that's on the national level. When you get to the state level, it gets a little more complex uh, when you go state by state. And sometimes in some states there are some more laws that crack down on corruption and bribery and basically making the politicians do not what the people want, but what the businesses want and what the businessmen and women want. So here we have a situation where in Kentucky, there were still some decent rules in place and there are some decent rules in place. But these politicians apparently got a whiff of what's going on at the federal level and they were like, hmm. How about no? How about instead of abiding by these campaign finance laws, we sue and we say we have a right to be bribed and oh yeah, let's just call that a right to free speech here. That's the argument they always make, guys. They say money equals speech now, so why can't I be bribed by whoever? And nobody's ever consistent on this either because if money equals free speech, then why aren't, I think this should be the case, but not for this reason, why are not all drugs legal? Because, hey, if money equals speech, then when I go buy some cocaine, I'm not necessarily going to do the cocaine. I'm just voicing an opinion, since my money is speech, that, hey, cocaine, I kind of like it. Why isn't prostitution legal? It's not a business transaction, no. It's my free speech, and that's me saying I like to pay for pussy. And you can go down the list of all the different things. I mean, murder for hire. Again, if money equals free speech, then me contracting to pay somebody to murder somebody for me, well, that's just me voicing that I would like to see person X, Y, or Z killed. There's no real connection there because it's not really a transaction. My money is just speech. So nobody's ever consistent about this, but that's the argument that they're using. They say money equals free speech, so I should be allowed to be bribed on the state level as much as possible. So, uh, these laws exist at the state level in Kentucky specifically because in 1992, the FBI found out that 15 politicians were literally selling their votes. So it's a little more uh, implicit, I guess you could say, on a federal level, where you'll have ExxonMobil and you'll have different Wall Street firms and you'll have whoever, different corporations, give money to the politicians, and then it just so happens that those politicians vote a certain way that's in line with their donors. In 1992 in Kentucky, it wasn't even like, there was like meetings where one person was like, I will give you X amount if you vote this way on that bill. So they got rid of the whole, you know, silent nature of it, and the corruption was a little too overt. <laughs> so they said, okay, we need some limits, this is ridiculous. Well, now they're trying to roll those back. Quote, uh, Schickel complained to his lawsuit, complained in his lawsuit that current ethics laws prevent him from attending holiday parties hosted by long-standing friends who are lobbyists or employ lobbyists. They go on in the piece in Raw Story to lay out that these guys really think that like their freedom is being taken away because they can't mingle with the people who are corrupting our democracy. Like they're they're totally oblivious. They're totally blind to the fact that there should be basically a wall of separation between lobbyist and politician. A wall of separation between lobbyist and state. Because uh, apparently they can't get it through their thick fucking heads that if you're mingling non-stop with the lobbyists that represent different businesses and you're buddy-buddy with them, are you likely to tell them no when something comes up? 
where you should tell them no to, to actually represent your constituents? No, you're going to sell out your constituents in a heartbeat and you're going to go with your buddy because he's your buddy. It's amazing that they don't even get the concept of good governance. They don't understand that, oh, you were voted in by the people, you're supposed to represent the people, and that's your fucking job. They think like, well, no, they voted for me, and then now they can go piss off, and I'm not going to listen to them. I'm part of the ruling elite now, and I only listen to the lobbyists and the rich people who pay me. What a grotesque system we've set up. And we've failed at every level here, guys, because there should at least be some level of shame with the lawsuit that these guys are bringing, where they think like, I mean, I want to do that lawsuit because I'm a selfish prick here, but I, sh I need to know better because if that gets in the papers or if people learn about that, I mean, I it's obvious that I I'm basically sending a signal to the world. I don't care about my constituents. I believe in an oligarchy. I believe in a kleptocracy. I believe in this corrupt system. But they didn't even, like, they don't even have the, the self-perception enough to, or the self-awareness enough to say, well, this is going to look bad if I'm going to be Karash and try to hide it. No, just because we fail at every level, that didn't even occur to them. And everybody's to blame for this. I mean, obviously, the system itself is to blame, the lobbyists are to blame, but also the media plays a huge part in this because you're not going to hear any substantive conversation about corruption or bribery in the national media anymore. And that's for a good fucking reason, too. Because who are the silent beneficiaries of money in politics? it would be the, the big news corporations. Because a lot of the money that goes to the candidates ends up being used to buy ad space on TV. So they make a lot of money come election time, so why would they want to talk about this fundamental flaw in the system which makes them rich? The entire system is corrupt, the entire system is broken, and they're trying to make it at a state level in Kentucky even more broken Everybody there should be aware of this and vote out these bastards.